hello and welcome to our Dying Matters webinar um, from Citizens Advice West Sussex um, with West Sussex Libraries and West Sussex CCG. Um, we'll today be sharing information about local support and resources um, that can help you when someone dies, um, practical things around finance and benefits um, that you may be able to access, um, help with funeral costs, um, and also an online tour of the um, brilliant new resource um, that's available from West Sussex Libraries um, that has everything um, that you could need all in one place. Um, it might be useful to keep a pen and paper handy, but we will also be sharing all the links online, um, either beneath in the comments, or you can click through to our webpage and we'll have all the other links there available for you. Um, today, we are really lucky um, to welcome Sarah Pierce. Um, she's the Head of Integration at West Sussex CCG, um, where she leads on the commissioning of health end of life care services, um, including voluntary hospices. Um, we also have Alan Lennox, um, from Citizens Advice West Sussex. Um, he's on our Macmillan team as a Macmillan Health Advisor, and he's gonna be giving some advice on benefits and financial support, practical things that you might need to know after someone dies. Um, and finally, we have um, Lavina McHugh. Um, she's a principal librarian at West Sussex Libraries and is perfectly placed um, to introduce um, their new um, online service. Um, so first, to hand over to Sarah Pierce. Um, alongside her work that I've already mentioned, commissioning end-of-life services, um, she also works with Kate Burrell um, in the establishing of the Com Compassionate Communities approach for West Sussex, um, and she'll be introducing a bit of that today. Um, so thank you so much for being with us, Sarah, and over to you. Thank you, Myra. Hello, everybody. Um, my name's Sarah, and as uh, Myra has just said, I work as the Head of Integration at West Sussex CCG. But I've been very involved in the developing of a compassionate communities approach to death, dying and bereavement in West Sussex with other partners and Dying Matters Week is a, a very vital and important part of this. We want West Sussex to be a place where people and communities can support each other when they are dealing with illness, death and bereavement and loss. And Dying Matters Week, Awareness Week, is all about encouraging people to talk more openly about death and dying. We know that from read from well, that when asked, more than four in five pe people say they would prefer to die at home. But having said all of that, nearly a quarter of UK adults are uncomfortable thinking about their own death and end of life care issues. It's estimated that three quarters or nearly 74% of people haven't written down their wishes or told people about what they would prefer at the end of life. So a little bit more about Dying Matters Week. The theme for this, uh, this year's week is a good place to die. And I think it's really important to say that there isn't a right or a wrong place to die. It will be different for absolutely everyone, but it's important to think about it, to talk about it and to plan for it. It enabled us to make choices and decisions, to communicate them and to have the right support in place. It also helps our family and friends if they know what our wishes are and what our, cho what our choices we, and what choices we have made. Something as simple as talking about what you might want to happen at your funeral can really help your loved ones during a difficult time. So for example, whether you want to be buried or cremated, you might want your favorite song or poem, donations to your favorite charity, or want to have your ashes scattered in a special place. You can also write down your wishes about your future care in an advanced care plan, which will help anyone looking after you to know what matters to you. For example, how or where you want to be cared for at the end of life. There are lots of resources available to help you. Um, these can be helped with making plans as well as supporting family and friends when a loved one has died. It can be diff can particularly difficult to think about and organise practical things when you have been bereaved. Trusted organisations can connect you with information you need to navigate things that need to be done, such as organising a funeral, as well as other sources of support, including help with financial costs. Today, we're really going to hear about what support is available from Citizens Advice West Sussex, as well as a new online signposting resource from West Sussex Libraries. Both Citizens Advice and your local libraries have staff and volunteers who are trained to help. Thank you very much, and I'm really delighted to be able to join the session today. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I'm now going to... Um, 
get into a bit of a conversation, ask some questions um, of our very own um, knowledgeable Alan Lennox um, from the Macmillan team. Um, it's it's basically really important, um, you know, no matter what your background or financial situation, um, deaths can um, cause, you know, surprises. Um, there can be, you know, either the the wearing down of 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 a long process of losing someone or a sudden shock, um, and there might be situations where you feel like you need some support and guidance when someone close to you dies. Um, so here in West Sussex, we are lucky to have a number of amazing organisations who are there to help you, um, and that includes the Compassionate Communities Network, um, ranging from emotional support to practical guidance. And um, Lavina will show you um, some more of those wonderful organisations later in this session. Um, but today we're also talking about practical help that's available. And first of all, we're going to run through some of that basic information on things that can help um, regarding finances, um, especially around arranging a funeral, um, but also um, the support that might be available to you um, following that ongoing. Um, so it's important as well, we're not going to be able to cover everything today. Um, we're going to be talking about things um, you know, in a fairly kind of basic way, um, but we do have a lot of other information available to you. So please do refer to our website or if you need specialist support, that's what we're here for at Citizens Advice. And please do contact us for more information or advice on personal circumstances. Um, and those details will be below this video. Um, so um, Alan, um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, first off, um, I um, was going to ask you a bit about what support is available for funeral costs. Um, I know that, you know, the cost of a funeral um, in, in the work that I've done, I work as community engagement lead and a Citizens Advice West Sussex, um, the cost of a funeral can often be um, a shock to people and families. Um, what, what kind of support is available for you if you need it? Uh, thank you, Myra. Um, the, the government actually have three levels of uh, support um, that are available to people. It is quite complex because each one of them has its own qualification criteria. Um, they have a bereavement support payment, which you may qualify for if you're of working age. Um, there is also a funeral support payment, which is a means tested benefit that might help to pay for some of the funeral costs. Um, and then if neither of those two are elig you're eligible for, there is also a public health funeral, which is you know quite a, uh, a basic form of help that's there. Um, what I would say is it, the information is there. Um, at Citizens Advice, we do offer a completely free and confidential service. We're very sensitive. Um, and, you know, we are more than happy to help people find the right resources um, to make the decisions much easier. So, you know, I would always suggest that they, they perhaps contact us either uh, in person or by phone or even by web chat. That's great. Thank you, Alan. Um, sort of, do people need to be aware of, I know, again, something else that came up through our um, engagement processes um, and the bereavement project that we've been working on in West Sussex with diverse communities is that um, those, those support things are there, but that they can take a little while um, to come through. So what do people need to be aware of around timescales? OK, again, depending on the, the support that you're, you're eligible for, um, it can take up to six weeks. Um, and in some circumstances, the, the part of the claim is that you have an itemised bill um, to submit from the funeral director, um, which obviously makes things quite difficult. Um, you know, so there is a delay there. Um, quite often the funeral directors are, are, are quite keen to support and they can put pressure on the, the government to move quickly. Um, but what I would say is when you're working with government departments, especially in a pandemic, actually getting the support quickly at the time you need can be difficult. Um, again, we can try to support people and help them uh, to get the support as soon as, you know, as, as, as possible, really. So would that be a case as well? Obviously, it's very difficult in a time of loss like that 
um, people might not be thinking clearly and practically, but if you can shop around a little bit or get someone to assist you in the doing of that, um, find a funeral director who's willing to work with you and is helpful in that regard that that can that does exist and that can go a long way to supporting this. Oh yeah, absolutely. I see the cost of funerals is, you know, varies vastly. Um, and also funeral directors have different rules, different schemes that they, they can do. Um, most reputable funeral directors would be part of a trade body, so they will provide um, an itemised, you know, bill or, or, or if you like, invoice for you on request. Um, it's always important to shop around um, to look at what the cost of things are um, and take into account what your financial resources are and also what your requirements are and try and find you know the right match for yourself um let's say there are some cheaper options as well that can be looked at other than just using a you know a, a traditional route of using a funeral director so what would be some of those ways of reducing the cost of a funeral if that was something that you wanted to do or needed okay, to do? again it depends on a lot to do with how much support you potentially have around you. Some people actually choose not to use a funeral director. Um, it isn't a legal requirement and the funeral director's cost can be a significant part of the cost. Um, there are you know, schemes where you can do things like a, a direct cremation, which is quite a cheap form you know, to, to do. Um, other things like natural burials, again, there are you know, natural burials, which again, tend to be cheaper. Um, and again, if you are not able to do those things and you do want to use a funeral director, even simple things like choosing the cost of the coffin, for argument's sake, that can reduce the cost, uh, the, the amount of cars that you have, the amount of flowers that you might want. All of these things can be negotiated. Um, and most funeral directors are there to help. They are businesses, but they, you know, they, they do want to help you. That's, that's, that's good to hear. Thank you, Alan. Um, so we've talked a little bit around um, the, you know, what ways that you can reduce the cost of a funeral, ways to meet the cost of a funeral, um, you know, and a lot of awareness as well that um, that's something that impacts um, on different cultures differently. There can be different um, cultural expectations around that, but there are um, ways of approaching your individual circumstances and if you need more specialist advice on that do please always contact citizens advice that's what we're here for um, now I'd like to ask some questions regarding um, increasing your own income or finding um, a bit more of ongoing financial support um, this is something that people may also need sometimes when they lose um, someone in their family, for example, if that person was the breadwinner or if they brought um, significant amounts of income into the household. Um, so what, what help and benefits is available to you in that eventuality? Okay, I, I mean, you're touching on quite a complex area there, Myra. So it's very specific to, to individual circumstances. Um, there is always going to be, uh, you know, an income shock um when you lose a partner really um it's very important very early in the process to um really get someone to support you look at actually what your situation is going to look like look at any benefits you might be eligible for um you know some people tend to think well if they're working they wouldn't be entitled to benefits but the benefit system is is complex and it does support people who are in work who are out of work some benefits are means tested, some benefits are not means tested. Um, so say certainly getting some expert advice on that, I would say is really important. Um, it can also be the case when you lose a partner and you inform the DWP um, that you will find that the, any benefits you were already claiming may have to stop and you might have to apply for new benefits. Um, we're really expert in that. It's something that we do day in, day out. We navigate the e-benefits system. Um, we don't judge anyone. Um, and the advice we give is free and open to everyone. So we really would encourage people to look at what might be available to them in the future. Thank you. Um, and, you know, again, aware we can only kind of 
um, just briefly touch on what is a, a very complex topic here. Um, but what about things like insurance, assets and pensions um, regarding to the um, deceased person's estate? Um, okay, again, um, the rules around pensions and insurance, again, can be quite complex. Um, each type of pension has its own uh, scheme rules. Um, so you would have traditionally, there's possibly three different types of pension, really. You would have some private pensions, you would have occupational pensions, and you would have potentially a state pension as well. Um, death impacts on those all in different ways. Um, in, in terms of personal pensions and occupational pensions, generally speaking, there is provision there within those schemes for either a pension to continue to dependents or in some cases for a lump sum to be paid to dependents. Uh, that, of course, wouldn't happen unless you make a claim to, to, to the provider. Um, so again, it's probably one of those situations where it is good to get some advice. There are lots of resources out there. Um, unfortunately, they are sometimes quite well hidden now, uh, Citizens Advice and at West Sussex Library System. Um, you know, we have obviously looked around at what's gone and pulled the resources together as best we can. So again, I, I would say it's really important to, to, to come to either ourselves or, or get some advice from another trusted professional in order to make the claims and make sure that you are getting anything that you're entitled to claim from, from, from pensions. Uh, the same would, would go with insurance policies. Um, a lot would depend on who owned the policy, whether it was the person who died who owned it or whether it was someone else. But a claim generally can be made um, and it can be a very good source of, you know, getting some, some funds quickly. Um, again, we would, we, we would be very happy to, to guide people and, and, uh, you know, and help them to make those choices uh, and make the claims appropriately. Thank you, Alan. Um, so I think the main takeaway from this conversation um, is that there are resources and information available um, both on our website and um, there'll be links um, under this video um, and on our social media. Um, also, of course, yeah, the, um, the new libraries resource that um, Levina will shortly be introducing. Um, but also if you need support, that's what we're here for. Um, we are available to come and speak to you. Um, we're used to speaking to people um, in these kind of situations and um, there will be um, both compassion and um, genuine practical support available um, if you need it. Um, it's a normal time to need um, a bit of help. Um, so thank you so much again, Alan. Is there anything you'd like to add? Um, all I would say is, that, you know, things are very complicated. It's obviously a very difficult time for people um, let's say it is really important to get the right support around you um, and that's what we're here to do um, and, you know we've done it for many years and so we are hopefully very good uh, you know very intuitive and, and, and helpful so uh, please, please contact us if you you know if you need to. Thank you. Um, I'd now like to hand over to Lavinia um, from West Sussex Libraries um, to introduce um, their uh, new library resource um, and give a virtual tour. Um, so thank you for joining us so much today, Lavinia, um, and over to you. Thank you, Myra. Hi, everyone. Um, so as Myra was saying, the library service um, is also part of the compassionate communities approach that we have in West Sussex. So um, if you didn't know, we've got 36 um, physical library buildings in West Sussex which um, you might think is quite a big number. So there's probably one quite local to you if you live in West Sussex. Um, and I'll show you in a bit how you might be able to find out where that is. Um, you can walk into any of our, our library buildings and you'll, you can expect a, a friendly, warm welcome. Um, and it doesn't really matter what you're asking us about. We will always try our best to find relevant information for you, um, whether it be books, or links or signposting to other services um, who can offer specialist support. Um, and bereavement is no different really. Um, so as well as the face-to-face -face service that we offer, we've also got um, 
a, a whole range of online resources and again it's kind of what we do best pulling together lots of different information sources for our customers for our residents um, to have a look through and if you need some guidance and support in finding the right ones for you then we can do that as well so I'm going to show you our new bereavement support web page now um, and the link to, to the page will be included in the description of this video and on the website as well so don't think that you've got to remember how to get to it but I'll show you now um, how you might navigate to it if you were just doing a google search I'm just going to share my screen okay so you should be able to see um, the google search box there so I'm just going to show you if you were to type in bereavement uh, libraries and Sussex that's probably all you need to do yeah and you get that top entry there which is the web page that I'm going to be giving you a virtual tour of so that's one way of getting to the page the other way um, is if you were on the West Sussex County Council website again if you were googling this you just type in West Sussex County Council um, or WSCC and you can find the, the home page there. So obviously you want to click on the libraries tab and then you get a range of tiles and the one that you want to click on is current library services. That's going to take you to a um, big green button which whizzes you off to the library's current offer um, and you'll see there's lots of different um, sort of strands to our current offer at the moment and the one that we're going to look at today is that bereavement support tile which at the moment is on the left um, second down so we will open that up there we go um, and I'm just going to take you around the page now I must add um, at the moment this opens best if you're looking at it on a laptop or a computer rather than a mobile device, um, because there's quite a lot of information on the page. Um, if you can look at it on a computer or laptop, you'll probably get the, the view I'm getting now, which will be easier for you to look through. Um, so if we go down the middle column, we're, we're starting with an introduction to the page and why we've brought all of this information together for you. And then there's a bit on Dying Matters Awareness Week, which, as we know, is, is this week. Um, and the main thing I wanted to draw your eye to here are these five leaflets. Now you can look at these online. These are really useful and um, quite thorough leaflets uh, on different subjects around bereavement and loss. Um, and if you haven't got a printer at home, this is the kind of thing you could come into your local library and ask us to print out for you. Um, and I'll just click the local library link there. Oh, it's unavailable at the moment. If you were to click on that link um, in normal, in the normal world outside of this recording, it, it should take you to a page where you can see all of the libraries in West Sussex. Um, and if you're not sure which is closest to you, just put your postcode into the box um, and it should give you your nearest one. So you can walk in and ask for support that way. Um, this supporting bereavement uh, number two leaflet is, is particularly useful might just take a minute to load there um, and this is a resource that's available for anybody it's on the dying matters website um, it's got several pages to it but i would say if you're looking for somewhere to start at the moment with supporting somebody who's been bereaved um, or if you want some information for yourself that's a good place to start okay so moving on down the middle column here a um, little bit about compassionate communities, as we've mentioned, and then you're on to your national support services. So I will touch on some of the local support services as well, which you'll be um, familiar with some of the names and they're on the left hand side. But if we just travel down the middle, it's um, alphabetical. Um, and the, what you'll find here is there's something for everybody's situation, we hope, and we will be adding to this page as we go forwards as well. So we know there's lots and lots of different support services out there. And we just want to make sure that whoever you are in whatever situation, you'd be able to find something here that would be useful to you. So there's some familiar names there, Age UK. 
Um, there's some quite targeted services on here as well. We've got Famestream here, um, which is a, a new service that's come out of the pandemic um, for Black, Asian and minority ethnic groups. Um, and that's actually a really useful um, link there for those communities who feel they would like a bit more support with bereavement, um, maybe a recent loss. And I think there's some sort of free counselling and things available through that service. So like a lot of these, um, they may have already existed pre-pandemic, um, but I think there's probably quite some specific COVID-19 support on a lot of these resources as well. So I'll just move down here and um, hopefully you'll be able to have a, a more thorough look yourself. But just to say there are resources on here for families who have lost children. Um, there are resources for children themselves and young people who are going through grief. And it could be, um, you know, the initial grief of somebody dies or it could be a longer term, um, longer term emotions and feelings that they are going through. There's also a range of uh, services that we're highlighting for particular faith groups. Um, there's even a, a helpline for NHS workers there. Uh, Mary Curie is um, helpful for people who um, might be supporting someone living with a terminal illness. So even um, sort of with those situations where you're expecting um, somebody to die soon um, there's support for you there because as we know those weeks and months approaching a death are really um, really overwhelming and then afterwards as well so there's all sorts of support on here um, lots of support for your well-being as well which is really important um, and some support for sudden or unexpected death so that's the, the middle column. I'm just going to take you back up to the top of the page now and go to the left hand side. So we've got some practical steps. Um, these resources are particularly helpful, I think, in those initial days and weeks of losing somebody. Um, there's some guides here which take you through step by step what you need to do practically, um, which is a, a little bit what um, Myra and Alan were talking about with funeral arrangements and and all of those difficult decisions that you have to make in a really emotional time. Um, just draw your attention to the West Sussex County Council's bereavement guide, and I'm going to open that link up. Uh, I'm not going to be able to show you that one either. Um, on that link, it takes you to the West Sussex County Council website where they've got step by step how to register a death in West Sussex. Um, and it actually touches on a service called Tell Us Once. Um, which is a process that happens once you've registered a death and that needs to happen within the first five days. Um, and the Tell Us Once service means that lots of local authority and sort of government organisation departments that you would need to tell and inform um, all get told um, in one go. So you only need to do, you know, give that piece of information once and then it gets... Um, sort of spread through the appropriate channels for you, which, which just takes a little bit of pressure off in those initial days. Okay, so we'll continue down the left-hand side. We've got um, links to citizens advice in um, West Sussex, which is the north, south and east areas of West Sussex, and then Arran and Chichester as well. So um, if you wanted any of the support that Myra and Alan were talking about, that's where you would go. And then the local support services. So um, you would have heard of Cruise Bereavement Care. Uh, if we scroll down a bit, there's Jigsaw who support young people. Um, and then there's some targeted support there for LGBTQ plus people and some help around wellbeing as well and supporting our communities, which I think we'll all agree has become really important during the last uh, year or so. We've also got links to our library wellbeing resources. So that's a separate page. Um, if you'd like some more sort of um, ideas and, and thoughts about wellbeing. 
We've listed some podcasts, which um, I hope we'll be able to add to as the months go on. There's actually a podcast from Dying Matters there. Um, and then there's Grief Cast and Grief Encounters as well. OK, so I'll take you back up to the top of the page one final time. And um, we're going to go down the right hand side now. So the um, top sort of area there is all about book lists. Um, and these are book lists that we have put together as um, library professionals and with support of the Compassionate Communities partners. Um, and we've put them together for adults, teens and children. So they're separate book lists for those different age groups. And um, the adult one, I should be able to open this link for you. Um, and these documents are accessible. So for people who are using screen readers, you should be able to um, read these using those, um, that software. So they're split into sections, nonfiction, um, general bereavement, the more practical support, death and dying in society, poetry and fiction. And obviously there, there are going to be lots of titles out there, but we've drawn together some of the ones that we would like to highlight for people as a, as a starter. And also we know that a lot of these are available as eBooks and e-audio books as well, which is a free service from West Sussex Libraries. Um, if you open up the links here, you'll be able to click straight through to our catalogue and reserve any of those titles from your local library. And then we've got one for teens. Again, those are unavailable at the moment, but normally they would be there for you. And there's one for children. And again, you'll be able to see the images of those books and you can click through and reserve them straight away. OK, moving down, just got a little um, sort of acknowledgement there, really, that when you have um, when you are going through a bereavement, it is a very overwhelming time. And it, it might be that you think I wouldn't be able to look at this page or I wouldn't be able to look through those book lists. or I don't have time. There's so much going on. So we do have um, a simple form which you can fill out just um, if you want to explain a little bit about the circumstances around the death or if you just want to give us um, uh, a couple of bits of information about yourself so that we can get back in touch with you and recommend some appropriate titles to support you. So don't feel that you've got to sort of take all this on yourself. We're there to, to guide you. Um, Books Beyond Words is um, a charity and they produce lots of different books on difficult subjects for people with learning disabilities or communication difficulties. So those are some really accessible titles there. And we do have um, those in the library service. We've also got some short films for children. And again, as, as we know, it's really difficult to explain death to children. Um, so these resources will hopefully just help to open up that conversation. And then finally, uh, just to touch on our digital support, which is available for anybody in West Sussex. Um, it's free. Uh, we work with some brilliant volunteers to offer a free digital support service. Um, and I think it's relevant to um, this sort of subject matter, because if you were to lose somebody in your family who is usually the digital person, um, it might be in a household, they do all the kind of online admin for the household. Um, you may feel like you've been left, you know, without digital skills. So we can support you in that way as well. And as a, a phone number, you can phone or you can email us. And a little bit about staying safe online, which is really important, um, particularly when there is so much going on in your life. OK, I'm going to stop sharing now um, and go back to Myra and everyone else. I think um, hopefully that was helpful to just give you uh, a bit of a tour of the resources that are there. That page will change. We're going to add things as we go. Um, and the main message, I think, is that libraries are a place you can come for support and for information. And it doesn't matter what the subject is. Please do come and see us. Um, we can signpost you and, and support you. Thank you. Thank you um, so much for introducing your services um, and showing us around the new website, Lavinia. Um, from the work I've done with diverse communities, um, it was especially great on a personal level um, to see those specialist services for those groups, um, as I know that those are really needed um, at the moment. 
um, even more than previously, if possible, um, alongside many other useful and reliable services, um, familiar and unfamiliar to people. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who's taken part today, um, Sarah from West Sussex CCG, um, Lavinia from West Sussex Libraries, and our own Alan um, from Macmillan Welfare Rights Team. Um, please remember you can visit our website. Um, a summary of this information will be there um, at www.advicewestsussexalloneword.org.uk um, or if you Google us, um, we'll come up. Um, for the library resources, um, please go to the West Sussex County Council website and click libraries, um, or as Lavinia um, showed, you can Google them as well, and the link will be below. Um, do contact us if you need any support at a difficult time. Um, we have email, web chat, and some face-to-face -face services available, um, as well as video appointments. Um, you can find further information on that on our website. Um, our advice line number is 0808 278 seven nine six nine that's zero eight zero eight two seven eight seven nine six nine um and previously said all of these links will be added to our website and um, social media and the key links will be under our video on youtube um we really hope this has been a useful session for people and um, thank you so much for watching and um, we do just want to say again um that if you need practical help and information and um, we are here and that there is plenty of support for you in west sussex um, thank you so much again.